The Norwegian Joy offers great food, entertainment, and nightlife, in addition to huge water slides and a two-story racetrack. But is it an actual joy to cruise? Well, with 4,000 plus people on board and sometimes tight spaces, it all comes down to how you feel about crowds and pool availability. In this episode of The Chill Cruiser, I'll dive into who the Joy is and isn't for and review all the changes in store, including the fall cancellation of its marquee production show and a major dry dock update this winter. Hey cruisers, Andrew from Ottawa, Canada here. Welcome to The Chill Cruiser, where I review cruise ships from a chill perspective, sharing tips on how to save time, money, and grief on your cruise vacations. Today I'm going to share my experience sailing on Norwegian Joy to Bermuda from New York this past August. This is one of my favorite itineraries. You sail out of downtown Manhattan, followed by two days at sea, then close to three days and two nights docked at Heritage Wharf in Bermuda, followed by one more sea day before returning to New York. It has the best of everything. Lots of sea days and lots of time in a beautiful port. This was my fifth time sailing on Norwegian and my third time on a Breakaway Plus class ship. For this cruise, I sailed with a friend and for the first time got to experience Norwegian's premium suite section called the Haven, thanks to my friend's casino discount. For this video, I'm going to focus on all the main elements of the ship. For a review of the Haven experience, hit subscribe and watch out for my next video. The Joy is a newer ship with a bit of an identity crisis. It was originally designed to sail year-round in Asia and launched in 2017. But like other North American cruise lines that tried to homeport a ship year-round in China, like Princess, Norwegian abandoned the strategy and spent more than $50 million in 2019 to repurpose the ship for sailings in North America. If you've cruised on a Breakaway Plus class ship before, then the Joy will look and feel very familiar except the upper decks, which Norwegian has struggled to get right since repurposing the ship. It must be one of their least popular ships because they're taking the extraordinary step to dry dock the ship again for another major update in January of 2024. Taking a ship out of commission for a month or more usually only happens every decade or so, but this one's happening after only four years. After taking a stroll on the Lido deck, you get a bit of a sense as to why. One of the first things you'll notice is that the pools are very small for a ship this size, and some of the smallest in the fleet, despite being one of the biggest ships. The Lido deck gets very crowded on a sea day. I heard a fellow cruiser say it felt like the Bronx Zoo. This will feel familiar for returning NCL cruisers, but may be a bit jarring for anyone used to most other cruise lines. That's because most of the real estate on the top decks is allocated to venues that require an extra fee, like the racing track, a laser tag course, the Havens pool area and sun deck, the Vibe Beach Club, and a retro diner restaurant. That's great for kids and the young at heart, but not so great if you just want to relax in the sun and swim with a bit of personal space. There are some major changes coming to the top decks, but with what Norwegian has announced so far, it looks like you'll only notice the changes in areas with an extra fee. The good news is that one very chill-friendly feature that's missing from the Joy, Norwegian's fantastic thermal suite, will be installed as part of the winter dry dock. More on that in a minute. First, let's look at Joy at a glance. It's only six years old and has 20 decks. Although it has a posted capacity for 3,800 passengers, that number can be deceiving because it assumes double capacity when many guests are actually traveling as part of a family with three or more people in the cabin. On my summer cruise, the ship sailed with 4,600 people or 800 over capacity, and you could feel it most of the time indoors and outdoors. More on that later. There are four restaurants included in your cruise fare, three main dining rooms and a 24-hour pub. There are also eight specialty restaurants that charge an extra fee, featuring almost every cuisine imaginable, including seafood, French, Asian, Italian, steak, barbecue, teppanyaki, and that American diner. There are 15 bars, including themed venues focused on wine, my favorite, mojitos, and whiskey. There's a fantastic promenade that wraps almost completely around the ship with outdoor seating for several bars and specialty restaurants. There are three four-fee activities, the two-story racing track, laser tag, and the Galaxy Immersive Entertainment Pavilion. The racetrack won't be affected by the upcoming dry dock, but laser tag and Galaxy will be removed. There are only two public pools, one for children and a smaller one for adults. Go figure. There are only four public hot tubs, although one of them is the size of a small pool and for adults only. There's a four feet outdoor lounge area called Vibe Beach Club, which will be expanded and take over the laser tag space in the upcoming dry dock. This area includes a dedicated hot tub, but unfortunately not a dedicated pool. There are two massive water slides, plus a kids water park. 
There's a large casino that takes up a quarter of the public spaces on Deck 7 with hundreds of machines and multiple tables. This was the first Norwegian ship I've been on where the main casino area was non-smoking, with a separate enclosed section for smoking, which was a welcome surprise. There are also more than six shops and boutiques. There are several other venues and amenities on the ship that are only available to guests of the Haven, which I'll cover in my next video. Before I start my review, I'll just quickly touch on Norwegian's Free at Sea program, which is their all-inclusive package that's included in most fares. Like most other cruise line packages, it includes the entry-level drink package, but the similarities end there. Instead of free gratuities and unlimited internet, which is included in the packages on other lines like Celebrity, you get two dinners at a specialty restaurant, a $50 excursions credit, and 150 minutes of basic internet. I personally prefer having gratuities and unlimited internet, since theoretically it's truly all-inclusive and means you won't have a balance at the end of the cruise for any essentials. On Norwegian, unless you prepay the service charges, your onboard account will be charged $16 per person per day in a regular cabin, or $224 per couple on a seven-day cruise. And if you want unlimited internet, it'll cost around $110 extra per person as well. Okay, let's get going with a review, starting with access. My friend and I took the train to New York City on Amtrak's Empire Line. It's a pretty train ride that follows the Hudson River right into the city to Moynihan Hall at Penn Station, which has a beautiful modern main atrium. We Ubered to the Manhattan Cruise Terminal from a station in less than 10 minutes. Embarkation was fantastic. The terminal is big and bright and very well staffed, which meant minimal lineups. My friend and I arrived early afternoon and we were on the ship in minutes. Since the ship was over capacity, it usually took several minutes before you could squeeze into a jam-packed elevator. As you'll see, the ship was not designed to handle crowds well, including this forward elevator lobby, which has eight elevator bays and a very small space. On the Lido deck, this area also served as the entrance to the outdoor decks, so it always felt crowded. Luckily, getting on and off the ship in Bermuda was a breeze since they had multiple gangways, but because of the crowded elevators, disembarkation day was chaotic and took longer than I'm used to. We were worried we were going to miss our train, so we gave up waiting for the elevators and carried our suitcases down the stairs, which was a bit stressful. After 34 cruises, this was the first time I wasn't able to easily walk off the ship with my suitcase. Once we were off the ship though, we were out of the terminal in a few minutes. Overall, I would give access a low rating of two out of five stars. Moving on to the vibe of the ship. The Joy feels like every other Norwegian ship, meaning the public spaces feel like a modern hotel or convention center, although with a bizarre chandelier, and lots of themed bars and restaurants. There are two modest atriums considering the size of the ship, one with the pub that overlooks the often crowded main lobby area, and another one with the casino overlooking a transit area for the disco and multiple bars and restaurants. The layout is fairly straightforward, although that forward elevator bay did make it easy to miss the restaurants and bars at the front of the ship, like Food Republic and the District Brewhouse. Signage throughout the ship was excellent, especially in the stairwell and elevator lobbies, which made it easy to find your cabin no matter where you were on the ship. Just like that elevator bay I mentioned, there are several public areas that felt very crowded, like walking through the casino to get to other venues on Deck 7. The large adult-only sun deck was used almost every night for some sort of deck party, which worked really well but I don't know where they would fit all those people indoors on nights with bad weather. From a demographics perspective, most of the guests were traveling as part of a family, so it felt like kids and teens made up about half of the population, with parents making up the rest. I'll rate Vibe 4 out of 5 stars. The cabins on the Joy are the same as other Breakaway Plus class ships, meaning a standard balcony cabin is nicely appointed with an average amount of space and storage. The bathrooms are a good size with an enclosed shower, the balconies are on the small side, but with enough space for two people to sit on an angle. Based on my previous experiences on Breakaway Plus class ships, I would rate cabins 4 out of 5 stars. My friend and I were in a Haven suite, which I'll review in detail in an upcoming video. Food on the Joy was excellent. I had meals in the main dining room, the barbecue and Asian restaurants, and the 24-hour pub, and they were all very good. Food Republic offers a unique experience where you order your food on a tablet with servers nearby to help with questions. We had several rounds of appetizers and they were just as good as my favorite Asian restaurants on land. Even though the ship was over capacity, we never had to wait to get into a restaurant or make reservations. We didn't make it to the steak or French restaurant on this cruise, but they've been great on previous sailings. And note that they do typically require reservations well in advance. We really enjoyed the barbecue restaurant thanks to live country music. Nightly Rich Duo, a husband and wife duo from Australia and New Zealand, surprisingly sounded like true country stars and were a real treat to watch. They asked me if I wanted to hear anything, so I suggested Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, and they did an amazing rendition. 
If you're not into barbecue, I would recommend sitting at the bar just to hear them play. You can check out a sampling of menus for most of the restaurants on my blog. Overall, I would rate food 5 out of 5 stars. Speaking of bars, drinks is also an area where the joy excels. With so many themed bars, there's truly something for everyone. They also have a great selection of wines throughout the ship, especially if you upgrade to the premium drinks package. In the main dining rooms, you could choose from an extensive list of more than 40 wines by the glass. I love a buttery Chardonnay, and every bar and dining room I tried had La Creme available, which was a treat. The District Brew House is a must-see for beer lovers with up to 50 bottled beers available and 20 on tap. Sugar Cane Mojito Bar is also definitely worth checking out if you like tropical cocktails. Both the District and Sugar Cane also featured live music at night. I would rate drinks 5 out of 5 stars. Entertainment on the Joy was also excellent. I didn't make it to their main show Footloose, but everyone I spoke to loved it, although some said it was a little too long. Since it is the full Broadway show, the running time is 90 plus minutes. Unfortunately, Footloose will be leaving the ship on October 28th, and there's been no announcement that I can find on what will be replacing it. I did catch two of the other main stage shows, starting with The Beatles, which features an incredible Beatles cover band that offers a musical tour of the band's career, complete with costumes, footage from Beatlemania, and an imagined tribute encouraging the audience to wave their phone screens at the end, which was a cool experience. Elements is a Cirque du Soleil style show with impressive acrobatics, music, and even simulated snow. With just these two shows, I was impressed for a seven-day cruise, so I think entertainment will remain solid despite the cancellation of Footloose. I would rate entertainment 5 out of 5 stars. Moving on to activities, there was a packed itinerary every day full of crowd-pleasing trivia, bands, and movies. Similar to other Norwegian ships, the Joy offered some of the best nightlife at sea, with a fun-themed deck party almost every night including parties dedicated to the music of a decade each night like the 70s and 80s, in addition to live Latin music and Norwegian's famous white party. The fun continued in their nightclub every night. You can find a sampling of daily programs on my blog. I would also rate activities 5 out of 5 stars. Let's talk about the ship's amenities, which is an area that's a bit polarizing depending on what you're looking for. From an adult chill perspective like me, amenities for ship to size are disappointing. With only one small non-kids pool open to the public with no indoor option and no thermal suite, I would rate amenities three, almost two out of five stars. There is an adults only sun deck at the back of the ship with a huge hot tub, but unfortunately no pool. If you're used to most other cruise lines that offer multiple pool options, you will likely be disappointed. Once the new thermal suite is installed in the winter of 2024, that would theoretically add a star if it's anything like the thermal suite on other Breakaway Plus class ships, which include a large therapy pool, various steam rooms, saunas, and even a snow room. Where the Joy does make up slightly for its crowded Lido deck and lack of pool options is the promenade area, which offers a much more chill and comfortable place to relax, have a drink, and enjoy some sea views and fresh air. The large observation lounge is also a great indoor venue to relax and enjoy the view. For the young and young at heart where thrills are more important than relaxing by the pool, then this ship is definitely worthy of a 5 star rating when you factor in the water slides, racetrack, laser tag, and galaxy arcade pavilion. Just remember that with the exception of the water slides, all of these facilities charge an extra fee. I didn't try the racetrack since it looked like you couldn't move very fast, but my teenage niece and nephew did try it on a previous cruise and said it was a lot of fun. Let's move on to the technology on the ship. The internet speed was average for a cruise ship. And the app was very functional, allowing you to check the daily program and menus and make activity or restaurant reservations. One aspect of Norwegian that I really don't like is that you have to pay to be able to message other guests through the app when it's free on most other cruise lines. I would rate technology 4 out of 5 stars. Moving on to the casino, which is usually one of my favorite parts of any ship. The Joyce Casino is a big improvement over most other Norwegian ships with the sealed off smoking section. This was the first time I walked on a Norwegian ship on embarkation day and I didn't smell smoke. There's a great selection of modern slot machines, just be prepared that your favorite machine might only be available in the smoking room, especially if you like the Buffalo franchise, like me. Since the casino is spread out over half the deck, it can take a while to get oriented and find your favorite machine. The non-smoking tables often felt very crowded and created a bottleneck for people trying to go from one side of the deck to the other or downstairs. Compared to other ship casinos, I would rate the slot payouts below average. My friend and I both walked off the ship with a hefty casino tab and didn't feel the love most of the time. All things considered, I would rate the casino 4 out of 5 stars. Last but definitely not least is service, which was excellent. The crew did an amazing job. 
Even though the ship was over capacity, you never had to wait more than a minute or two to get a drink at a bar or get a table at a restaurant, and everyone from hosts to bartenders and waiters were always friendly and attentive. I wouldn't hesitate to rate service 5 out of 5 stars. Overall, I really enjoyed the cruise, but the crowds and lack of pools were disappointing, and it doesn't look like Norwegian's going to fix these issues in the winter dry dock. If you're looking to plan a relaxing vacation and love your pool time, then I would definitely not recommend this ship, especially during busy school vacation periods. The Haven's amenities do offer a break from the crowds and a better pool experience, but not as much as I thought it would. Watch out for my next video where I'll share a full review of my Haven experience. If you're planning a family vacation where pools aren't a priority and you don't mind paying extra for a lot of activities, then the joy is definitely for you. Speaking of planning, I recently shared some expensive lessons about travel insurance after missing my cruise ship this past spring. You can check them out here if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and happy cruising.